Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, Jesus Christ. And I, we're kind of in a series for this, for this year. Last year, it was all about being intentional, being intentional with the things that we do. This year, we want to con- kind of talk about love God, love people. Love God and love people. I don't know why the Lord just impressed that on my heart, but I just think because of the situation we're in, like even in America, there's this huge divide where we kind of hate each other. Am I right? You don't think like me, and, and you don't have the same values as me, and that's true. But then all of a sudden, we're hating each other, and we're taught, and we're almost encouraged to hate each other. And God says, church, that's not you. Your greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second greatest commandment is just as equal with the first one. And what is that, church? It's to love people as we love ourselves. We're to love God and love people. You cannot love God if you do not love people. The Bible says so. And so that's kind of the theme that we're going to be in for pretty much most of the year. And today, uh, I just want to kick it off with uh, Jesus uh, going and washing the feet of his disciples. So don't run away. We're not going to wash your feet, okay? But we want to talk about that. And what does that mean for us? But before we do, I want to open up with a very bad joke, okay? All right. Most of them are that way, okay. Uh, There was this particular man, he was very, very ill, and uh, he'd been to the doctor, he'd been to multiple specialists, and then uh, he's home, and they said, we would like to talk to your wife, would you please have her come on into the office? And so she came into the office, and he stayed at home, and they said, listen, ma'am, your husband has a very, very rare disease, and uh, good news is there is a cure for it, but it's at a price. Number one, we have this medicine, it's experimental medicine, and it's shown some good results and it's expensive, but number two is the part on you. You're going to have to take care of this guy. You're going to have to meet his every need. You're going to have to make sure he has a specific diet three times a day, and you're going to have to be the one to cook it. Not only that, but he has to have clean sheets at least every other day. I mean, it's attacking it through that way. And so you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to meet, uh, you're going to have to take care of him, uh, whatever it may be, keep him at rest, keep him at peace. And then after a year, this thing should resolve itself. If you do the medicine and you do that honor and just taking care of him. And so she left the office and she came home and the husband goes, oh, what'd they say? What'd they say? Well, she said, the doctor had some bad news. You're going to die. You're going to die. That was a bad joke. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Many times uh, we look around and, and we see needs in people's lives, don't we? How many of you guys have ever seen a need in someone's life as you're just walking through? For instance, Uh, Many times I've come to work and I see someone in the ditch in the snow. (laughs) I go, oh, someone should take care of them. (laughs) That's kind of me. I mean, we see needs in people's lives. We see the needs in people's in their homes that need to be taken care of. We see the needs of the widows. We see the needs of the the fatherless. We see the needs of those around us. And, And lots of times we think to ourselves, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that. That one's kind of beneath me, you know. Not only that, I'll probably, they'll make me smell bad. Yeah, no one really laughed too hard on that because you really thought that. I'm not doing that. That's a little beneath me. I don't, I don't want to do that. Matter of fact, someone else could probably take care of it for them. They should have never gotten into that posi- position in the first place. I'm not doing that. See, we see needs all around us many, many times. And lots of times, our actions, we may not say that out loud, we may not think that consciously, but our actions scream it. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Am I saying that we should go and do everything that we see around us? We'll get to that in just a little bit. But lots of times, our heart says right away, I'm not doing that. Why don't you just look to someone right next to you and say, I'm not doing that. (laughs) Oh, you guys did it. I did not expect that. (laughs) I expected you guys to say, I ain't doing that. (laughs) Yeah, we, we, we see needs and we think, uh, that's, that's beneath me. Jesus, Jesus continually shocked people with his irrational acts of servanthood and servant love. Jesus was constantly shocking people. He would go to someone and everyone else who says, that's a sinner, stone her. Jesus would go and show love and forgive that person. No one else would forgive. 
Jesus showed a rational acts of serving love when he went and visited Zach uh, Zacharias. Zach he's the one that climbed the tree, right? Zacchaeus, okay, Zacchaeus. Zacharias, he's, never mind. He's probably underneath the tree by now. But anyway, Zacchaeus, he was the one that climbed the tree. And you know, no one wanted anything to do with him. That guy could have been bleeding on the ground and they would have walked past him because they hated him. But Jesus saw a need and he loved on that boy. He loved on that boy. He went to his home. Irrational acts of serving love. Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw a woman walking by with her son uh, who was dead and they was going to bury him. And he just, compassion came out and he laid hands and prayed for them. He raised the dead. Jesus feeds the thousands. He could have just said, hey, that's the end of today's sermon. God bless you. Go home. I'll see you next week. But he knew that they was far away. And he knew that a lot of them had stayed there for a long time and they would have gone home and they would have fainted. He goes, let's feed them now. Irrational acts of serving love. That's what our Jesus does. And that's an example that he gives us. This year, we want to focus on that. Jesus wants you and I to love like he did, irrationally, with servanthood. Amen? Let's, listen, the church really will shine when the world sees us acting that way towards them and each other as well. Today, I want to talk about Jesus washing disciples' feet. And um, let me start off with this scripture, but guys, don't come out yet. I have some guys who's going to act it out for us. In John 13, 1a, it says this. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that it was his hour, that his hour had come to leave this world and to return to his father. Okay, pause right there. Listen to me. Jesus knew who he was. He knew he was God. Jesus knew where he came from. He came from heaven. He remembered his experiences with God. He knew all those things, and he talked. And so Jesus knew where he came from, and he knew at this very hour right now that he was going to go back to be with the Father. Hallelujah. I don't know what that is. It's not my beard. Okay, here we go. So Jesus is a human on earth, and he was ready to go back to heaven. Ready to go back to heaven. And on the eve of his crucifixion, this is what happened. Jesus loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now... Jesus loved him to the very end. I may have to grab a microphone there. Jesus loved him to the very end, and Jesus never stopped loving his disciples. And it says this, and it was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. So here we are. Let me just quickly give you the Passover week. That's what this is, the Passover week. Monday, Jesus Christ comes in. And as he comes in, he sees the temple. And he sees it full of all these money changers. What, what do you mean by money changers? What they did was they say, well, you can't, we cannot spend your money. You have to use a special temple coin. That's the only thing you could do in, in this temple here to buy all this stuff. You have to use a temple coin. And by the way, you don't have that. We do. And we have a great exchange rate for you. Give us your Roman coins. Give us all the other stuff. And we will exchange it for you. And they were making money. They were making coin on this right here and they it was all about the money and that's exactly what they were doing not only that they were selling things way beyond the prices that people could afford so jesus came in he saw this going on in his father's home and what did he do on monday he went in he overthrew all the tables just knocked them all over all the coins everywhere ran out with a whip and ran out all the animals that were there and all the people said what are you doing here he says you're not going to turn my father's house into a den of thieves it will be a house of prayer amen and so Jesus on Monday is doing that. On Tuesday, Jesus goes back to the temple and he's arguing with all the Pharisees, all the religious leaders, and they're just going back and forth debating because they're angry. He just messed up their system. They say, what right do you have to do this? Show us authority. Show us why and all that kind of stuff. And he's arguing with them and debating with them again and again. And it's also that night, Judas Iscariot went to the high priest and he says, for 30 pieces of silver, I'll get them for you. I'll take you to them. And that's what happened. Wednesday, we don't see any record. Thursday, Thursday is the Passover meal. And in that evening, Jesus gathers his disciples. They go to the, uh, uh, the upper room that was already prepared for them. And at that time, uh, Jesus knew who he was. I'm God. Jesus knew where he was going. I'm going back to heaven. But here's what Jesus also knew. He knew that Judas would betray him. Jesus, Jesus also knew that he would be arrested and that he would be beaten Jesus knew that his disciples in that evening, they would totally abandon him and run away. Still, what does the Bible say? Jesus loved them to the very end. Wow. 
He knew all this stuff was going to happen to God. It should not happen to God. But still he loved him to the very end. Jesus had already taught his disciples when they're in the upper room. He already taught way back in time. He says, the greatest among you must be a servant. And at the very last meal, what do we do? We find all the disciples arguing who is going to be the greatest. Who is the greatest? Matter of fact, in Luke 22, it says this. The disciples began to argue among themselves about who will be the greatest among them. Right there at the very last meal. And they're just constantly arguing. And Jesus looks around the room, and these are two things that he sees. Number one, he sees proud hearts. And then number two, he sees dirty feet. He looks down and he says, there's a need right there. I could do that. I could do that. How many of you guys would argue that Jesus is kind of important? Jesus is kind of important, right? John 13, 3 says this, Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and that he would return to God. Jesus, the God of the universe, all creation down here is only created because of him, because of the name of Jesus. Jesus knew where he was going and Jesus knew that he was the son of God. So what did Jesus do? What did the son of God do? He loved his disciples. Hey guys, come on out now. I'm going to read this. So, Jesus got up from the table and he, where his disciples were and they were all arguing who's going to be the greatest among them and who was the greatest among them. And as they're at the table, Jesus, he took off his robe, he wrapped a towel around his waist, and then he poured water into a basin. Then he began <clears throat> to wash the disciples' feet and drying them with the towel that he had around him. See, back in that time, it was common courtesy to greet people with a kiss. And also, it was common courtesy to wash their feet because they walked around. There's a lot of dust on their feet. They didn't have Nikes. They didn't have the boots like we have today. And so they had all that stuff, and their feet would get really dirty. But listen to this. The master wasn't the one who washed the feet. The master had servants who washed the feet. And so the servants would wash the feet. But Jesus, who is... The master, a pretty important guy, he puts on an apron, he gets a basin of water, and he washes him, their feet. He lowers himself. The Bible says this, that when Jesus came, that he lowers, he lowered himself to the world. He lowered himself to the world. Jesus is still, listen, he's still lowering himself. He came as a baby, a human, came into a broken world. But even in this world, he still served people. He still loved people. And how he showed his love was by serving people. And here we have, we see Jesus lowering himself once again to the disciples, washing their feet. Hallelujah. The Son of God, the Prince of Peace, the living water, the bread of life, the light of the world, the Alpha and the Omega, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords knelt down and washed people beneath him their feet. He was a servant. He showed his love in that capacity. He looked around, he says, I could do this. He didn't say, I'm not doing this. He did that, constantly showing them. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Thank you, guys. You guys' feet look really good. You can go home now. Jesus saw a need. Look at that. This is now we need to apply it to ourselves. Jesus saw a need. The feet were dirty. And he said, I could do that. I could do that. And he showed his love to the very end. How did he show his love to the end? With his actions. So many times we as a church, we could show our love by our words and by the things that we say. But really, the love that speaks the loudest is the actions. It really, really is. The love language that speaks the loudest is our actions. Disciples were too busy thinking themselves the greatest and too important, yet the greatest ever born lowered himself and washed their feet. Hallelujah. Let's continue reading in John 13, verses 12 through 15. After washing their feet, Jesus put on his robe again, and he sat down and he asked, Do you understand what I was doing, guys? Do you understand what I was just doing? 
You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, because that's what I am. I'm teacher and Lord. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. Now, is he talking literal washing of feet? No. He's talking about serving. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Church, who's a disciple of Jesus Christ here this morning? Okay, this is what Jesus says to you and I. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Jesus Lord himself and served us. Jesus Lord himself and died on the cross and took the suffering and the pain and the sins of the world upon him and the separation from the Father, which is greater than you and I can even imagine. And in doing so, he served us because if Jesus, listen to me, if Jesus hadn't done that, we would all go to hell. We would never have an eternal relationship with our Father. We would be eternally separated from him. So Jesus lowered himself and he washed our feet in that way. And he loves us and he says, do as I have done. This is an example. Jesus demonstrated what he wanted them to do and Jesus demonstrated what he wants you and I to do. He says, I've given you an example to follow. Do as I've done to you. I'm not doing that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> I'm not doing that. That's just too beneath me right now. You may not think that, but your actions say it. My actions say it. I'm not doing that. I'm too busy. I'm not doing that. Someone else could do that. Someone else will do that. Here's what we need to pray, church. Ready? Because Jesus said that this is what we ought to do. He says, I've given you an example. Now do as I've done. This is the example I want for you. Here's what we need to do. Lord, open my eyes to the needs of others. Because we as Christians, not intentionally, because we're busy and we walk through life and we don't see the needs of other people like we should. Jesus saw the need right there. No one else saw it. But Jesus saw it because he loves people. And so what we need to pray is this. Lord, listen, Lord, give me a love for people and open my eyes to the needs of other people around me. Please, Lord, open my eyes to that. And if you, if you see a need that you can meet, then you ask God this thing right here. God, is this an assignment that you have for me to do? You know that God gives us assignments? He brings people into our past or he puts us in the path of people. Who is that? I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. Who is that one gentleman that, Jesus, uh, that God uh, took him and had him run alongside the chariot? And he says, do you understand what you're reading? Philip, that's guy. That's it. He says, Philip, I need you to go and run along this side. I want you to go to this place and you're going to see someone drive by and I want you to go along. See, the thing is, God has an assignment for Philip. God has an assignment for you and I. Look at me. God sometimes has an assignment for you every single day. Yeah, some, it's not one time assignment and then woohoo, I go to heaven now, I'm done. I get to retire. You know, no. It's an assignment sometimes every day, and sometimes it's multiple times a day. I remember reading a story Smith Wigglesworth wrote about, and um, he's with one of the guys that helps him and does things. And Smith Wigglesworth, you don't know him, he was a he was a man of faith. He was a man of faith. Maybe it's batteries, I don't know. Jimmy, can you give me some uh, two double A batteries back there? Smith Wigglesworth was a man of faith, and God used him miraculously. Check this out. One day, the Lord told him, I want you to go to this train station and wait right there because there's going to be a man I want you to speak to. So he goes. He takes the guy with him. He goes, hey, we're going to a train station. The Lord has an assignment for us. He goes, and he sits down. He waits, and they wait, and they wait, and they wait. They wait a couple hours just sitting there. And all of a sudden, you know, there's not much action going on there. Someone gets off a train and sits there beside them for a little bit. And so Smith Wigglesworth looks over to him and just starts talking to him and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with him. Thank you. And he starts, starts sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with him and just witnessing to him. And then after a little bit, the guy gets up, gets on his train and leaves. And that was it. Then Smith Wigglesworth turns to his assistant. He says, all right, it's time to go. Let's go home. He goes, that was it? That was the assignment? He goes, yes, that's all the Lord asked me to do. You know, sometimes God will give you an assignment 
once a day, twice a day, maybe lots of times a day. I have no idea, but God will give you an assignment all the time if we just pray and say, Lord, open my eyes to the situation. And if we're surrendered to say, I could do that. I could do that. Lord, I pray right now that you give me love for you, for people and for you, Lord God, because your heart is for people. And Lord, I pray that you'd open these eyes to see the needs of those around me. And Lord God, is this an assignment that I see? If I see a need, Lord, is this an assignment that you want me to take on? And God will just put it in your heart, yes. And then you do what you can to meet the need right there. And listen, here's what I always say. Always give God the glory in that need. Always give God the glory. Everything that we do should make Jesus famous. Amen? Everything of our life should just make Jesus famous. And so when we bless someone, when we do someone say, you know what? The Lord loves you and he put it on my heart to do this for you. God loves you. God loves you. Is there anything I can pray with you about? It's just that simple. And you'd be surprised what happens. Hallelujah. Look at my tail there. Okay. <laughs> so, Lord, you wake up every day and pray, Holy Spirit, give me eyes to see the needs of others. Give me ears to hear those who are hurting. Hallelujah. God, there's a need, need, I, I will need it. Let me give you an example. There's a group of guys that I get with every Thursday morning, and we come here and we pray. And we just, and Richard, isn't this our prayer all the time? Lord, open our eyes to see the things around us. Lord, give us ears to hear and help us to do that. And we pray that. One day, right after we pray, we always go out for breakfast. And uh, when we was out for breakfast one time, I think it was just uh, Jason Hutkins, myself, and I forget who else. John Wooten, were you there? No, you weren't there. Uh, so anyway, uh, but it was one of those days that we were there, and um, all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I saw some guy walking up, and it was cold. I saw some guy walking up, and I looked out of the corner of my eye, looked at him, and he, we both made eye contact. And then you could see him making a decision. Yeah, I'm going to go in here. He was just walking by. And so I, I looked away. He came in. I saw him, waved at him. He went and sat down at the front of the table by himself. And uh, we was in a corner there just having our uh, talk and everything. And then one of the waitresses came up. She goes, well, you guys, keep an eye out for that guy. I, we're scared. He looks very suspicious. He's acting strange. And I, I just please help us. And so I looked over, and I thought, okay, I'll get up and do something. I was, uh, so I got up, and I went bathroom. And... Um, <laughs> Then after that, Lord's in there going, what are you doing in here? <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Open my eyes to see. So I, I go back out there, and I, I go up to the man's table, and I introduce myself. I say, hi, my name is Terry Baldwin. He goes, oh, hi, my name is, I'll call him Mr. J. My name is Mr. J. And I've never seen the guy before, and I say, well, wait, what you doing, man? What's going on? And then he started laying out the story of his life to me. And this was the story of that particular night. The night before, him and his buddies decided, we're going to go to this town, and we're going to go to the bars, and we're just going to have drinks, and we're just going to have some fun. They go to the bar. He sees a woman there that he recognizes. He's married, and he recognizes this woman. She's married. But still, they decide, we're going to get together. So he says, goodbye, guys. I'm going home with her. Gets in the car, and she takes him to a, a, another town. It wasn't her town. Uh, they're driving around, and then all of a sudden, something came over them. They both realized, we're not going to do this. This is, I'm too scared. I'm too nervous. This is wrong. You're married. I'm married. And so she drops him off in Rochester, so far away from his own home. And she doesn't live there, and she drives back home. Well, in the process, she took his phone and his wallet by accident. By accident. <laughs> Jimmy's laughing back there. So anyway... So here is this guy walking around Rochester at like 6 in the morning, had been drinking all night. And he's walking around 6 in the morning around the lake, because that's where we were, and he's walking around the houses. I'm thinking, you're walking around the houses at early, early, in the morning, early in the morning? You're lucky someone didn't shoot you, man. And then he goes, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So we sat down, and I said, you know what? I think God sent you here. I think God says, you're not going to do this thing because God is wanting to protect your family and he's wanting to protect her family as well. And God wants to protect you. And buddy, you're right now, you're in the presence of God and you've got a choice to make. You need to obey Jesus or you're going to disobey Jesus. And I, the spirit of boldness came over me, okay? The spirit of preacher, like my kids always say, you're preaching again. So anyway, uh, hey, I tell you what, it's not me that's doing that staticky noise. It's every, it, turn off everything else except for this mic. And so... 
that's what happened. So I said, well, let me take you home. I did not realize he lived a half hour away. Again, I'm not doing that. That's what went through my head. I'm not doing that. The Lord says, yes, you are. And so, so I drive the guy home, and we talk, and I got to pray with him and, and, and meet with him and stuff. And so I want you to know, God will have an assignment for you. And the only way you're going to know that assignment is if you have spiritual eyes to see, spiritual ears to hear, and a heart that loves people. Now, if you have the two out of three, God still will use you. And then he'll give you the third. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God wants to use this. God has an assignment for you. Say, God has an assignment for me. And I want to know it. See, it's up to us to know we have to go after God. Hallelujah. We have to know that. Lord, I could do that. I could do that. This one's mine. This one's mine. I could do that. Kids, listen to me. God has assignment for you guys and girls. God has assignment for you guys now and then. You may think that that's just for when you get a certain age that God has an assignment for you. God ha yeah, I'm talking to you kids. God has an assignment for you. God has an assignment for every one of us. If we would just say, Lord, I want to be in your will. I'm telling you what, there's no greater joy than to be in the will of God. Matter of fact, there's a scripture that says that. Kids, pray and ask God to help you to see. Say, Lord, help me to help people. Help me to share with them about you. Help me to pray for people. Lord, help me to serve my neighbors in their driveway, shoveling the snow, whatever it may be. But then those always leads to opportunities to make Jesus famous. Amen? Make Jesus famous in everything that you do. Hallelujah. Uh, some of those people, listen, kids, some of the people that you help, they're not going to be very popular people. Other people won't like them. You may be the only one, kind of like Jesus and Zacchaeus, <laughs> right? Or maybe some of those kids that you help, they're total jerks. You know, God wants us to help jerks too. We were a jerk till God helped us, amen? And he's still helping, yes. Some won't even say thank you when you help them. We got to help people. We got to love God and we have to love people, amen? And with this, I'm going to close right here. In John 13, 15, it says this. And this is Jesus talking. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. God will bless you for doing them. You know, the blessing that we're talking about there is not just necessarily a blessing of uh, God will give you a car. God will give you money. God will give you new things that you want. God will... You know, the blessing is that joy, that excitement. I'm telling you what, there's no greater joy. Say, so you may say, I've been very down. And listen, when you're down, the best thing that you can do is to love people. When you're so down or so depressed or whatever it may be in your life, and then it may be a good reason. At that moment, say, I'm going to give the devil a black eye, and I'm going to serve people, and I'm going to love people. And when you do, the Bible says that God will give us a blessing, and that blessing is the joy of the Lord. You want to get over the problems in your life? Serve other people. Then all of a sudden, the blessings of God comes in, and the joy. Amen? It doesn't make sense. That's the kingdom of God for you, man. The kingdom of this world doesn't make sense. When we do the things that God calls us to do, the rest of the world goes, that doesn't make sense. If you're down and depressed, and maybe you should have a whole bunch of counseling, or maybe you should go into group therapy, or maybe you should go into these other things and just, just focus on yourself and your problem again and again and again. God says, you want to get over that? Why don't you serve some people over here and love them? Because I, you're saved. You're mine. I want them. I have an assignment for you. Can you do that? And when we serve other people, the Bible says that we will be blessed when we do it. Not when we think about it. Not when we wish, oh, I really wanted to do that. Joy and blessing doesn't come then. Blessing comes when we're obedient to the Word of God. Can I have an amen? Joy comes when there's obedience to what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Hallelujah. Blessing is not just in hearing the word. Blessing is doing the word. Hallelujah. Every morning, pray. And this is our assignment, church. Pray. Holy Spirit, give me eyes to see. Give me ears to hear. And give me a heart that cares for the things around me. Hallelujah. And Lord God, and may I never say, I'm not doing that. 
May I say, Lord, is this an assignment from you that you want me to take care of? I see a need. I see a need. Is this an assignment that you want to give me to take care of it? And God will say, yes, it is, my son, my daughter. Or he may say, no, this isn't. But if you want to do it, go for it. <laughs> Whatever it may be. Hallelujah. So this is an assignment that you have for me. And that's the question. God, is this an assignment that you have for me? And then just say, I can do that. Amen. Let's pray. And, and as we're praying, uh, no, we'll just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your great mercy. I thank you for your love. Oh, you are master. And you are king of kings. And you lord yourself to us. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for that. We don't deserve your kindness. You didn't do it for us because we deserve it or we're so nice that we just, you just wanted to do something nice for us. You did it because, Lord God, we were headed to hell. And if you had not come down and done those things, Lord, there would be no opportunity for us to trust you and make it to heaven. So thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you, Jesus, that you want to use your church and your people to see your kingdom come and to make, your, make you famous. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our ears. And give us a heart to love people. As we're still praying, you might be here today and say, you know what, I'm not a Christian. Listen, Jesus did come and die for our sins, but that doesn't save us. It's when we put our faith and hope in him. When we realize that we are broken, that we're messed up, and that we are sinners. And we may think we're good and nice people, but we're not. We are wicked, sinful, rebellious people against the word of God and against God. But yet God still loved us and he made a way for us to come to him. And it's through Jesus Christ and what he did for us. So we're not good. But if you've put your faith and hope in Jesus, say, Jesus, thank you for what you did for me. I accept the gift of salvation and I apply it to my life. I repent of my sins. I don't want to live that life anymore. And I surrender to you and your will. Lord, be my savior. If that's you today, God wants to fill you right now with his spirit. If anyone just raise your hand, I just want to pray for you real quick. We always ask this because God's working on our hearts. Yeah, I see one hand right there. I see two hands. Praise the Lord. With our heads still bowed, I just want to just give one quick testimony. There's a, a beautiful family uh, that came to this church and they've been with us for years and years. And then one day, they went on a missions trip. And on that missions trip, um, one of them heard the clear message of Jesus and realized how terrible their life was. Not just how bad their life was, but how wicked they were in their sins. They thought they was okay. But when they heard and realized how bad they were, and they turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, will you be my salvation? Will you forgive me for my sins? I repent of them. And she gave her life to Jesus. She'd been coming here for church for so many years. And she gave her life to Jesus. And she came back full of joy and gave the testimony. And I, and I realized that sometimes that's how it was with me when I was younger. And that might be you today. Don't ever think, well, people, will, I've been there going for years, are going to think bad of me. No, we're going to rejoice because no one wants to be tricked and then end up in hell. We want to trust the Lord and, and ask him to forgive us of our sins and save us. So I'm just going to give one more chance. Does anyone else want to give their life to Jesus and want to surrender everything? Yes, I see that hand. All right, let's pray. And will you guys repeat after me? This is from your heart. Here we go. Jesus, thank you for loving me. I don't deserve it. I realize that. I'm a rebel. I break your laws all the time. My heart is not for you. It's only for myself. Please forgive me for my sins. I'm sorry. I need you. I need you to be my savior. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross to do that very thing, to be my savior. So Jesus, I put all my hope and faith in you not in me. I repent of all my sins and I'm going to go after you with all my heart. And when I do mess up and when I do sin, 
I can come to you and say I'm sorry. And you will forgive me. You will forgive me. I'll be forgiven in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. We hope you've enjoyed today's message. If you have made a decision to accept Christ as your Savior or in need of prayer, we would like to hear from you. Please contact us at either 574-223-7631 or email us at admin at faithoutreach.cc. For further information on our church, go to our website at www.faithoutreach.cc or like us on Facebook. Either way, you will find information on upcoming events, archived sermons, who we are, as well as other activities going on here at Faith Outreach Center. On behalf of Faith Outreach Center, this is Roger Vogel saying, God bless and thanks for listening.